Welcome to Remote Daily. On the agenda today is death, uh, the death of traditional leadership. That's what we're going to talk about. Our guest today has a gift to facilitate experiences in which people really connect. And that is also the reason why she can feel the traditional way of leadership dying. Welcome live from the sunny south of Spain, Esther Blasquez Blanco. Esther, Esther, it's such an honor to have you on Remote Daily. Welcome. Thank you, Felix. <laughs> <laughs> you brought this big thesis to the room, this big question. Why is traditional leadership dying? I don't know if I have the answer to that. I am experiencing that it is happening. I think there are many reasons, perhaps as human beings in the planet, because what I see is that there is no one kind of leadership anymore. The leader is not that person in a room with a brilliant idea or a brilliant sentence to say, and the truth above everything, with good public speaking skills, with, you know, all that. This is evolving. This is not like this anymore. So I think this is something that we are experiencing nowadays. And um, so what you're saying is, in traditional leadership, I'm of course thinking about the, the CEO, a military term, the pyramid, the yeah. strictness, the know yeah. it all. Um, yeah. There's now a lot of different ways. And as many different ways as there are people on the planet, you said. So very excited to dive deeper in this, into this with you. Esther, you have left the hustle and bustle of the big city during the pandemic. You relocated to this place with the orange blossoms. And why did you do that? Why did you change your own life uh, during this time and put yourself in a completely different surrounding? Well, we all experienced a lot during the pandemic. And I did myself also. And um, I lost my brother during the pandemic. And I don't say this for pity. I say this because I think that this is to provoke organizations in the way that we are not having certain conversations. Like what is what we lost during the pandemic? But we will speak about this later. So the thing is that that happened and uh, I'm sorry. And thank you. And that was the moment for me to say, there is no time to waste, like for real. Like I know it, it might sound a little bit typical that when you lose someone, then you realize of the things that you want to do and that you don't want to wait anymore to do. But it happened. That typical thing happened to me as well. And we had a conversation in my family and we said, OK, this is something we've been talking that we've been always dreaming to do something like this. And we said we are not going to wait anymore until the perfect situation to do this. So let's go. Let's let's do something that it's been always like whispering there. And I'm sure the, the this community, they know about because you meditate and you to mindfulness and there is always the whispering of something in our lives that is knocking, right? That is like, hey, 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 you know, there's always something. So th th one of my whisperings was, hey, what if you try in a small city and you smell other things and you, like, if I do like this, I see the sky and, um, and I really wanted to have this experience and I also have a, a daughter and um, and I wanted her to have um, another experience and to run f more more like freely and stuff like that. And the other day when we were speaking about this conversation, I because this is very intimate, right, uh, and personal. But I decided that I wanted to to share this because it's not only me. It, it, it didn't happen to me. It happened to uh, thousands of people, right? And 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 this is this is something that that I think that 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 it's not happening enough, which is to have meaning, meaningful conversations inside our organizations to share what is what is what we lost because in and this is very related to business to to leadership 
because we also have this idea of the leader that is also talking about wins, right? When we speak about businesses, we are always thinking about what what is what we are going to win? What is the impact of this? So if I invest in happiness in my office, so people is going to be, I'm going to win productivity. You know, it's always the conversation about winning, which is necessary because because we want to make money and, and businesses have to um, make money. And I wish for all the businesses to, to, to be rich, of course. And... And there is also a conversation that we need to have, which is what is what we lose? Because there is that that's a reality that is happening. And uh, and and sometimes it's about trust. Sometimes we lose trust. It's not that we lost a human being, someone. It's that we are lose we lost trust in our team during the pandemic. I don't know, or during as a, a crisis that we had, or we lost engagement, or we lost. You know that that's also happening, and uh, yeah, and and I, yeah, and I say this because this is something that I envision a lot to have create these safe spaces for us to have these kind of conversations, because yeah. So the thing there is that when when you do that, you you are gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna show my my vulnerability with you, of course you know and that been always in the opposite side of the leadership as usual you know yes. like a leader sh should keep it professional and don't show emotions and all that well rashad I actually put that in the chat uh, when you asked the community in the beginning this combination of no empathy um mm -hmm. of a lack of innovation because change is scary and then what you just referred to the bottom line mindset right so it's always about winning mm. it's never about losing and mm. i'm so great I, i'm I, I you know i feel really i'm very moved by your story but i also feel very honored that you came here and shared this with us and the point that you made about that this is not being addressed it reminded me of an article that i just saw in the atlantic that said there's probably around 9 million Americans grieving right now because of someone they lost in, in the pandemic. That's 9 million people that nobody really talks about. Um, and you're from a different place in the world, but you're part of this much larger group. I think the new numbers just came out yesterday that the numbers were probably way, way higher um, mm -hmm. of people that lost loved ones and partners and and it's just crazy the amount of grief and that's going on and just by you giving putting that out there and giving that example i i think others can can latch on to that and say yes this is this is worth talking about i'm i'm not alone here and so it ties directly in what you said about leadership because how many teams are really addressing this that they have people in their midst that are grieving. Um, how many leaders would would admit in a company meeting that they are grieving? Um, and uh, how many organizations have things in place to talk about this? So, so thank you for bringing this here. And what you do is. I guess somewhat similar to, to what we do here. We're in an intimate space, and you you create emotional intimacy for for others. You you go into companies, you go to leaders, you go to teams, and you facilitate. And listening to you, you have this amazing voice and appearance. Just from the first moment I met you, was felt special to me. But may I ask you why you actually do this work? Because obviously. You started out as a journalist. You went in the startup world. Um, why are you doing this? Why do you facilitate? Why do you decide it, that this was your purpose to bring emotional intimacy and connection into companies? Mm. Um, this is this is when I say to you, do you do you have hours and uh, <laughs> whiskey and? <laughs> Or a glass of wine, and <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um, the 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 like 
the recap would be I do this for the love of life. That's I do this because this is the way I breathe. This is this is this is what I decided. But not many years ago, like a f just a few years ago, uh, uh, that I wanted to do this every day of my life, and. Um, and I, it didn't came when I was 20 or, or 30, you know, like, um, but I do have the feeling that everything that I've been living, like from uh, studying journalism, project management, working with the startups, uh, uh, training uh, theater, yoga, meditation, sacred circles, et cetera, et cetera. Now I have this feeling that everything that I've been living, uh, uh, I can can be at the service of the people that I help. And I can use all of these. I don't know if I like the word use, but you know what I mean. I can use all of these in order to to in order for them to 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 live experiences. Um and of course I had uh I had crisis, you know, like I, I had a, I had a, a burnout. Uh, and I have the experience of not knowing, like literally not knowing, and uh, and to to and I had the experience of going through a period of, of of very 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 much uncomfortable and having to answer uh, difficult questions, you know, about what is what I really wanted to do with my life, um, and 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 what is what was that thing that I wanted to do every day. You know, and and that was a difficult one because in my experience, uh, like I was enjoying um, all the the things that I was doing. You know, I, it was I was successful at the things that I was doing, but there was also I, there was always something that I was missing. And uh, until I had this burnout, and I had to stop, and I had to listen. And listen and listen and listen and see and see and see and see and answer these uh, questions. And that was the moment that I had a conversation with Tim Leverecht from the House of Beautiful Business. And mm -hmm. he said, um, Hey, um, I'm, yeah, we have this event uh, and, uh, and I'm wondering if you could facilitate something for uh, uh, the room of deep emotions. I think it was how they called it deep emotions um, and he asked me to do something around feedback and I and I said okay this like like I, I'm just living a, a big crisis like the biggest of my life but you are uh, organizing my favorite event in the world so I will be there um, and I decided to go there I didn't have uh, you know, I I decided to go there with uh, someone that something that I called uh, feedback as a gift. That was my first MVP. I I closed my like I I bought my website 48 hours before going to the event. I went to templates online printing, you know, a company to print cards, you know. Uh, <laughs> with a template well and and i put in on the website i remember like building something beautiful like i didn't even have a website i just knew that i wanted to do this that i wanted to facilitate a three hours ex uh, experience uh with everything that i knew it was so necessary to live in our businesses and it was all about yeah about communication and feedback as a gift about human connection and about leadership mm -hmm. And now companies hire you as a as a culture consultant, so they, they bring you yeah. in frequently to change how they look at leadership and work. And you said in the beginning um, that you see this old leadership um, sort of paradigm dissolving, and there is now many, many, many ways of leading which is scary because it means that we don't have really have a reference on, on where to look at. But is there maybe, from all the people you work with on a, on a daily basis, maybe is there a person or a team or even an organization where you say there is a rebirth of leadership happening at this very moment and this is worth looking at 
as an example for how to deal with this old way of leadership disappearing slowly or being challenged? Mm. Mm. Um, yeah, it's interesting because I don't have the feeling that I change them or that I help them change. And the change thing, it's been in our vocabulary very, like for the last years. And I like to think that that of evolution more than mm -hmm. evolution. That that's one thing, and another one is that uh, I think that our role is more to 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 be there and to make the right questions, to help them connect with their own wisdom and their own creativity to find their answers by their own. So, you know, and, and if you really commit to that, which is the most difficult thing, because what is the easiest? Yes. You know, like the easy one is that I go to a business and I say, hey, I have the methodology for you, you know, and I'm going to implement it my way. And I have the answer and I have the solution. And of course, I do have methodologies and I do have processes and I know how to implement OKRs and know how to work with values and I know how to discover the mission and the vision. And, you know, I, I of course, but I know how to do it my way, like it's my way. And, it, and I have to use my wisdom and my knowledge, of course. But there is another part, which is the most important one, which is to know, to know what, what, what is inside this organization. What are the ingredients, how they breathe? What, what, what is these people saying? How do they communicate between them? What is their, what, what's their dreams? What are their dreams, their, ambi their ambitions? What, how do they say life and death and, you know? And from there, we can build something and helping mm -hmm. them to connect with their own creativity and to connect with their own answers. Because when they find their answers, their answers by themselves, it's like there is, there is already a knowledge and an intelligence and, and inside the team already. The role of a leader is to unfold it just, it's it's like it's like uh, Leonardo da Vinci, you know, with the Murano, with the with the marmot, you know. It's like it is inside there. It's it's inside there. So, so I truly believe that 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 part of our role uh, and part of the roles of of main, the managers and etc. is to enhance enhance. How do you say mm -hmm. this? Enhance. Uh, the potential of their teams. So my mission as a leader is to do that, to enhance the potential of my team. I don't want them to follow me as a leader. And this is very important because we've been thinking that a leader is someone that we have to follow. And I'm sorry, a leader wants to follow. I don't want you to follow me. I. You know, like, and I'm not talking about, and it's not about following. I want you to shine, actually. That's the right way to say it. A leader, a leader wants you to shine. If then we follow you or we don't follow you, it, who cares? It's not about following. It's about allowing, allowing others to shine and allowing the potential of other people and the creativity and intelligence again to be there in the room. So what you're saying is this 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 um, Louis XIV's son that used to be on top of many organizations <laughs> yeah. that shines onto everybody else and everybody else stays like it's like kind of like this. Yeah. Is setting and what is what is rising is many, many, many little sons. And the leader may or may not be one of them, but he basically helps them to shine. So just trying to paint an image here as, as your way of leadership, old ways dying, new ways coming. If you go into yeah. an organization, and I'm thinking about conservative traditional organizations right now, financial institutions, insurances. Uh, yeah, uh, let's st stick with those two for a moment. Where this has, it has never worked like that. Um, mm -hmm. You had to come in, you had to work way too much for a certain number of years, then you 
get into a position of power and you do the same thing with the next people that have come in. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you explain to someone in that position that they have to change? Now, not, or not to change, to let an evolution happen, as you just put it. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I make them live the experience of presence first. That's because there is something here like and I will come back to, to this question. It's just a reflection. The th we know a lot. We have a lot of knowledge. We buy books where you have like the 10 steps to do this, like the methodology of this. The, you know, we watch uh, amazing TED Talks. Thanks God for the TED Talks. Uh, you know, but there is a lot, a lot of data and a lot of knowledge. So, mm -hmm. the th so the, and this is very common in a board of, uh, you know, in, in, in a C-level room, for instance. They know a lot of things. And they know that they know. Okay. The question is, are you living the experience of what you know? Mm. And this is urgent, like really, like, please world, hey, hey, we need to live the experience of what we truly believe that we want to live. So if I, if I think that feedback, because I read about it or because it should be a gift, then we need to have the experience of feedback being a gift, right? So it is fundamental when I go to this, to an organization that they experience this. Then it's also fundamental that people, uh, um, uh, people in, in the, in the sea level suit, uh, in the sea level room, that they that they want the the commitment of these people because otherwise it's super it's like really really it's very difficult yes and then it, once they experience it it is and 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 they have to train it meaning that teams they have to find a way to leave this from like in their lives there is, we, we can awake this consciousness in an off-site retreat. And it is very necessary, mm -hmm. and I truly support that. But after the off-site, there is always this feeling when you, you know, like, like there is always this feeling that, wow, it was amazing. We were like super connected and it was tr really great. And then a month later, they are all, you know, again with the same uh, issues, mm -hmm. right? So let's, have this offsite, but let's dedicate a moment and a few hours in our offsite to decide our agreements. So how how are we going to experience this mm -hmm. every day in a realistic way that it can infusion the entire organization forever? And by the way, that is part of our legacy which is fundamental when we speak about leadership. What is what you want to leave in this place? In the benefit, for the benefit of people that you, you will not know. And that is so beautiful. That, 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 is, that, is, that is very important because then you can commit to, you have a responsibility when you are working in a place because it's not about you, it's about what you are doing and what you are living in that organization and people will benefit from your legacy there and that beautiful concept is sometimes is not present mm -hmm. right so when i talk to these people that you are uh, uh, coming back to your question i also ask them how do you want to die which is how how did you sleep last night it is the same question like it it, it is is it gives it gets um, the answer is 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 uh, it has a lot. It, it is um, I don't know how to say this, but um, if last night you were going to bed thinking about the sentence you didn't say in the meeting, 
the answer someone gave in that meeting what do you how do you want people to behave another way how do you want people to do things your way how this perf- people is not performing the way you want so if you go to sleep this way the lottery for dying in peace eesh. <laughs> you know what i mean Uh so do you want to die in you know like how do you want to go to sleep do you want to and that is where legacy is important so what's your commitment for this company how do you want to leave this company when you when you say goodbye so the question the the answer to the question how is leadership dying could be well if you're a leader how do you want to die (laughs) That could be a, a good question. Yeah. And Esther, you you were so kind to offer to give us a glimpse into your work here today and mm-hmm. facilitate a moment of connection with us. So uh-huh. with our group of, with our, I should say, family here in the room uh-huh. um, and with Eleanor's help, um, who is, I think, uh, getting her instrumental surroundings ready, um, I am now uh, passing the mic to you and the stage is all yours. And thank you for offering okay. and for being here. Okay, thank you. Um, is there a way we can see everyone um, in the screen? Yes, so if uh, you go like to the people, top right yeah. corner of your ah, okay. Zoom screen, yeah. um, you can click on gallery uh, on the view button and then you choose gallery view. This is okay. um, how it's going to be. And if you're joining us from the live stream here, Jolie will help us to get the okay. grid view on. Okay, because I want people to do this. Okay, I would like to uh, ask everyone there to uh, to look at the screen and uh, to look at the people that is participating in this, in this meeting. Um, and you pick one one person and uh, and I'm going to ask you to uh, to look at their eyes, even if they are very little, it's okay. Um, you look at their eyes. Eleanor, you can start when you want to. Thank you. Just that for a few seconds, very simple. Doing nothing, kind of. Just looking at someone's eyes. And, um, Please observe the dignity of the human being that you are looking at. From human to human. Even if I don't know you, but I can observe your dignity. Observe and listen. And if your mind goes to another place, it's fine. Then you just come back here. It's fine, (laughs) really. And I would like to invite you to uh, start listening deeper because um, I want you to listen and to wait for the question that is going to come. So I want you to listen a question for you. What is, what is that a question that you want to answer? 
what is a question that you want to answer and and wait a few seconds and see what what question appears And with your mind, I want you to offer this question also to the person that you are looking at. Like if the question was a gift, but you only look at this person and you observe this person and with your mind and yeah, with your mind, your spirit, your heart, whatever you offer this question to to this human being in front of you And write down the answer. If you have a pen and a, a paper, write down the answer. And if you don't have a pen, it's fine. Um, fill the answer. And again, look at this person and uh, feel your answer as a gift for this person. The beauty here is that it's not about the other. The beauty here is that um, that I that when I look at you, I see myself. This is the idea. That's what I'm asking you to look at someone. It's not to see that person. It's to see yourself. And um, I'm going to ask you also to write down, what do you care about in life? Like if you were going to share the answer with that person. So if that person asked you, what do you care about in life? What could you say? Please write it down or fill the answer. What do you care about in life? Really, 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 really. And the last question is, um, what would you like to care more about in life? What would you like to care more? And try to listen the whisper, like this, this, the whisper, this, the answer coming that has been always there saying, hey, what if you care about this more or what if you start caring about this 
for real from today to the rest of your life. And with the honesty of the question, you listen to the honesty of the answer and you write down the answer. It's going to be for you. And when you finish, you look at this person again. And you put a thank you in the eyes. It is beautiful because this person will never know that you thank him or her. But you can feel the thank you, I'm sure, in your, in your soul or in your heart. And, um, and this is for you not only to see yourself, but to open the door to share what you love. And uh, when you see someone that is sharing what they love, you see a leader. You see a leader. So when you share with someone, this is what I really care about in life, this is what I could like to care more about in life. Wow. I think you can feel and you can see a leader there. And, um, and this is a conversation that I, I dream for organizations to have more and more often in life. Thank you. And uh, take a deep breath. And, uh, and that's it. <laughs> thank you so very much, Esther. You're welcome. And thank you all for being here and participating, experiencing this. Thank you, Eleanor. Thank you, Dario. Thank you, Karis. Alejandra, Anne, Eileen, Heidi, Sarah, Jolie, John, Lil, Rashad. Liz and everybody who took the time to be here today. Esther, um, it has been such an honor and very, very much a glimpse into the amazing work that you do every day with people, which is so deep and so honest and so vulnerable and so difficult. So thank you for giving us just a bit of your heart and your soul and mm -hmm. um, making us experience something here that we had never had on remote daily um and um the last question to you esther is how can we support you as a community i didn't expect this one <laughs> by living by living what you experienced today by sharing what what you experienced today with people even if I don't know about that, even if I don't know you, but I, if today you have an experience, um, share, share, share what you experienced. If you felt something great, then share that feeling with the people you care about in life. That could be amazing. I will just quote the chat here and say many thanks. This was really beautiful and powerful. And we love you, Esther. I'm just <laughs> quoting from the chat here. And we hope that you uh, come back and tell us more about your work, your journey and how leadership is changing. And I'm glad that people like you are there and go into organizations and rock the boat. And this is exactly why we're doing remote daily mm -hmm. to give people like you a platform and to host you and hopefully make this time worth for you. I'm very, very glad to spend time with you all today. And I want to thank you, Esther, and hope that you have a good weekend. Thank you. Thank you so much. And 
I'll quote Esther to close today's session. When you see someone who's sharing what they love in life, you see a leader. Happy weekend, everybody. This is remote. Daily.